Hello everyone and welcome to Box Office Receipts. I am your host Tyler Callahan and the numbers just keep coming in as more movies keep getting released. Uh, so let's start with the domestic numbers. Opening in first place is Fantastic Beasts and the Secrets of Dumbledore with 43 million. Dropping to second place is Sonic the Hedgehog 2 with 30 million for a total of 119.6 million. In third place was The Lost City with 6.5 million for a total of 78.5 million. Everything Everywhere All at Once made 6.1 million for a fourth place finish with a total now of 17.7 million. In fifth place was Father Stu, which opened to 8 million. As for other films that recently came out, Morbius is dropping like a rock, dropping to sixth place, making only 4.7 million for a total of 65.1 million. An ambulance came in seventh place with 4 million for a total of 15.6 million. So not a great opening for Warner Brothers, but this was expected. Analysts had it coming in between 40 to 50 million, and it did just slightly on the lower side. There are two things that caused this. First, this film had to try and win back the fans lost after Crimes of Grindelwald. While compared to most films, this, you know, Crimes of Grindelwald is okay. As a Wizarding World film, it's the worst in the series, and fans were not happy with what they saw. Not only that, the Rotten Tomato score for Secrets of Dumbledore were holding steady around 60% until this week when American reviewers watched it and that dropped bad and is now staying around 49%. Still better reception than the previous film, but it's still not a great film. Uh, this only now makes it the second worst film in the franchise, uh, at least based on Round Tomato scores. Paramount's films are holding well, with Sonic 2 not dropping that bad compared to its opening weekend, and it's still on track to finish with at least 175 million domestic, and for A24, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once is still doing great after expanding to more theaters. China continues to slow down with The Secrets of Dumbledore staying in first place with 3 million for a total of 14.6 million. In second place was Man on a Ledge at 2.7 million for a total of 6.6 million. Third place was Hotel Transylvania, Transformia with 1.3 million for a total of 7.9 million now. And fourth place was Escape Room 2 with 610,000 for a total of 6.4 million. Lastly, in fifth place was an Indian film called Deshaim, which opened to 513,000. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's the Chinese box office right now. Uh, no word on any new film release dates for Chinese or Hollywood films. I'm expecting at least for the Chinese studios, if they were planning to release any in the next few weeks, they will be delayed. Uh, Shanghai is still in lockdown. You know, heading into the fourth week. So, yeah. This is uh, starting to end up going to be a while, I think, for the Chinese box office to go back to normal. Looking at worldwide numbers, The Secrets of Dumbledore made another 71.7 million for a worldwide total of 193.4 million. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 made 25 million for a worldwide total now of 231.8 million. Morbius made 6.7 million for a total of 146. 0.4 million. The Northman also opened up in a few markets over the weekend, making 3.4 million in its debut. It'll open up domestically this weekend. Got some news to go through, so let's start with the release date changes. Most of them are from Sony, uh, and we start with the Spider-Verse films. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse has been delayed to next year from this October. It will now come out June 2nd, 2023. Due to that, Across the Spider-Verse Part 2 will now be released March 29th, 2024. Sony will be moving up their animated film scheduled this year, Lyle Lyle Crocodile, from November to October 7th, taking over the Spider-Verse spot. For films in 2023, The Equalizer 3 has been given a release date of September 1st, and the next Spider-Man spin-off uh, live action, I should clarify, Madame Web, will come out July 7th. So we'll have Craven Hunter in January, I believe, next year, and then Madame Web in the summer. The studio did not give a reason for the delays for the Spider-Verse films, and I hope it's just because it's taking time to animate and nothing is wrong quality-wise. As for the release dates themselves, uh, Madame Web is in a tough position, i got to be honest. Assuming no one moves, it opens a week after Indiana Jones 5 and a week before Mission Impossible 7. So really, for it to have any chance of making some money, it needs to have great reviews. 
If it gets the reviews like Morbius got, it's dead in the water. Searchlight has announced their next film going to theaters, and that is The Menu, starring Ralph Fiennes, Anna Taylor-Joy, and Nicholas Holt. It will be released November 18th, later this year, ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday. For movies in production, Vin Diesel announced on Instagram that Fast 10, now written as Fast X, has begun filming. Right now, it's still set to come out next year, and no word on what the plot is. In an exclusive with Deadline, Warner Brothers and New Line will be working with Kevin Costner to produce his film Horizon. The film is a period of Western film that Costner is starring in, directing, and producing through his own media company, Territory Pictures. No other news for the film has been announced so far, but they are aiming to start filming by the end of summer, so we should get casting announcements soon. I think this is a good pickup by Warner Brothers as it helps them by diversify their lineup, and thanks to Yellowstone, Costner has kept a solid fan base around him, so when fans of Yellowstone hear more Western content with him starring in it, they should be easily convinced to go watch. Now for another Deadline exclusive, this time for a film that has stopped production. Uh, Begin Again, a searchlight film that was in production, has stopped. The film is directed by NZ Anzari and stars Seth Rogen and Bill Murray. What happened is there was a complaint made against Bill Murray for inappropriate behavior, and after starting to look into it, Searchlight has halted production as it continues its investigation. Because it is an ongoing investigation, Searchlight has not released any comment at this time. Deadline sources say the film was halfway finished before production stopped and was set to release sometime next year. I won't say much, as there's not many details to go on, but I will say since the studio stopped production for the film, I take it the complaint is serious and has some merit. We'll see where this goes. Finally, we got a short teaser for Thor Love and Thunder, and it went big quick, getting 209 million views in 24 hours. This is going to be, along with Doctor Strange, the big movies of the summer. Personally, I was hoping to finally see Christian Bale's gore, but I guess I'm going to have to wait. So VOD is pretty busy this week. Let's start with Amazon, where The Hollywood Reporter has the exclusive on this. Ben Affleck and Matt Damon are teaming up again for a film about former Nike executive Sony Vaccaro. Ben Affleck will direct, co-write, and play the role of Nike co-founder Phil Knight. Damon will co-write, produce, and play as Sony Vaccaro. As for the plot of the film, it is focused on signing Michael Jordan to a shoe contract in the mid-80s and the lengths they took to do it. It will be produced by both Amazon Studios and Skydance Sports. If played as a serious drama, I think this film can work. And with both Affleck and Damon, there is serious talent here. I look forward to watching this when it comes out. This week we've got some earnings, and with that we start with HBO Max, as this will be the last time AT&T reports on the numbers. Over the past three months, HBO and HBO Max together got 3 million new subscribers, bringing its worldwide total to 76.8 million with 48.6 million of those domestically. While not tied to the earnings report, Warner Brothers Discovery made its first big move as a new company, and that was to shut down CNN+. That's right, the brand new service that launched at the end of March will be shut down at the end of April, lasting only a month. Subscribers will get a partial refund, and right now the company did not mention where the content of the service would move to. I will say this is not surprising at all. It's been reported the Discovery leadership did not want this to launch as they planned to have an all-in-one service, but Warner Media executives went ahead with it anyway. As for why they dropped it now, well, the numbers for it have been terrible, and the new leadership didn't want it anyway, so it's gone. I do expect to see a hub in HBO Max sometime this year with some of this content, as if any new shows are made for it to move forward, I'm not sure. Really, the worst thing about this, though, is the ones that will likely lose their jobs. CNN was building a team out just for CNN+, so unless Warner Brothers Discovery moves them to different departments, they will be getting the cut. Hopefully, anyone who is let go lands on their feet quick. And the big news in Hollywood this week is Netflix and the bad quarter they had. For subscribers, the company announced they overall lost 500,000 subscribers, and their total fell slightly to 221 0.64 0.64 million. That in and of itself is not an issue, as they said they lost 700,000 when they stopped operating in Russia. The bigger issue here is future growth, which is to say there is none, which is not good. Uh, they expect in the next quarter to lose 2 million more subscribers. As a result of this, the investors panicked and reevaluated Netflix, causing the stock to drop over 
35% and losing over $54 billion in value, the worst in company history. So what is Netflix doing to right the ship? First, they've now changed their minds on ads and now looking into releasing an ad-supported plan with a lower cost by the end of the year. A lot of growth for other streaming companies has been to offer an ad-supported model as the lower price allows customers to have more services at the same time without costing too much. Netflix thought it could be the exception to the rule, as in everyone has Netflix and they build their streaming portfolio around them, right? So like if you have Netflix and let's say you got 40 bucks budgeted for your, uh, your streaming content, 20 of it goes to Netflix because everyone has Netflix and then you spend the 20 bucks on other services and Netflix, I, th- I guess, opinion was that if you gotta keep Netflix, the other services have gotta fight for your attention. They don't have to. Well, that seems to, uh, that rule seems to be broken now. Uh, the cl- turns out they're not the exception to the rule. Why? Well, they keep up in the price. And if you have either family or want 4K or both, it's now 20 bucks a month. It is the most expensive streaming service available. Most of them are still $10 and under, and even between 10 and 20 bucks, but still cheaper than Netflix, is HBO Max and free. Uh, Netflix is also pushing forward with a way to crack down on password sharing so that some of the ones that are not paying will get their own subscription to the service. The company reported they believe there are 100 million people out there that are using someone else's account. This is going to be tricky because depending on how they implement this, it could result in frustration for actual paying customers. Customers who might say, fuck it, and cancel. Overall, I think the issue Netflix is facing here is one that they should have saw coming. They mentioned in their earning call that there is increased competition, and they are right. That competition right now is dominating. Even just culturally right now, the biggest shows and movies everyone are talking about, they're not on Netflix. So what people are seeing right now is the cost of Netflix keeps going up, but the quality content is not really there right now. If I was running Netflix, I'd be changing up the entire creative department right now because producing content takes time, and competition is only going to get stronger. Also worldwide, if inflation does get worse and people got to make some cuts, Netflix is probably one of the first to go with it being the most expensive. You know, if you're managing your budget and you got to cut some money, it's easier for you to cut Netflix, save 20 bucks a month and say, keep HBO 15 or an ad supported version of HBO Max for 10 bucks, Paramount for seven, Disney for eight. You have one or two of those. It's still cheaper than having Netflix. So this is something they definitely have to keep an eye out for. And that'll be it for this week's episode of Box Office Receipts. Question for the episode is, are you thinking of canceling Netflix if you have it? Why or why not? Let me know on Facebook. Link to the page is in the show notes. Thank you for listening.